In this video, we're going to see an explicit calculation for the change in entropy in a chemical reaction. All right, so in the last couple of videos, uh, we have introduced the concept of uh, absolute molar entropies and how they can be used to calculate the change in entropy in a chemical reaction. And then uh, we have also seen the origin of those absolute molar entropies via the third law of thermodynamics. Okay, so here we're simply going to take those values that we, that we have described uh, in the prior uh, couple of videos and then just see how simple it really is to try to uh, use them to calculate changes in entropy in a chemical reaction. Okay, so uh, before we do that, uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that predicting the sign of the change in entropy in a chemical reaction is very straightforward. Okay, so for example, uh, think about a, a, a simple chemical reaction like the synthesis of ammonia from uh, hydrogen and nitrogen. Okay, so uh, something like this, 3H2 to generate two molecules of ammonia. Okay, so uh, notice that entropy is a measure for uh, uh, mass dispersal and energy dispersal. If we're running this reaction isothermally, which we're always going to be doing, okay, then uh, you simply have to look at the mass dispersal in the reaction. Okay, in this particular reaction, you have that uh, all of the species are gases. Okay, so they are uh, going to be uh, generally equally entropic. Okay, uh, uh, so, so really the only thing that you have to do is see uh, what are the stoichiometric coefficients in, in uh, reagents and products. Notice that in reagents, uh, you have four molecules uh, reacting, and in products, there's only two. All right, so what has happened is effectively a mass agglomeration during the reaction, and that means that the change in entropy for the reaction should be negative. And it is. For this particular case, uh, it's about uh, minus 200 uh, joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, so it's this type of, of uh, a prediction of the sign that is going to be quite useful. As a general rule, uh, uh, because gases are more entropic than solids and liquids, when you look at the chemical reaction, you have to look first at gases, right? So if you have more gases in products than in reagents, then that's likely going to result in a positive uh, change in the entropy in the chemical reaction. If you have fewer molecules of gases in products than in reagents, then there should be a negative uh, change in the uh, entropy of the reaction. Now, in some cases, you're, you're going to have the same number of uh, moles of gases, and then that means that uh, you have to th think about something else. Okay? All right, so now let's um, uh, uh, switch gears and just do an applied example just to see how to punch in numbers in the equation and so forth. Okay, so we're, we're going to calculate what the change in entropy in the combustion for sucrose at 298 Kelvin uh, and one bar is. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is uh, uh, figure out what the uh, uh, combustion reaction for sucrose is. Sucrose is a solid and has the geometry C12, H22, O11, and then we're going to combust it, which means that we're, we're going to make it react with oxygen gas. And the products, when we run this at 1 bar and 298 Kelvin, are going to be CO2, uh, which is a gas, and then water, which is a liquid, at those conditions. All right, in order to do these calculations correctly, we need to balance the reaction appropriately. All right, so we have 12 atoms of carbon in reagents, and then that means that we need a 12 here for CO2. And then for uh, hydrogens, we have 22 there, that means we have 11. Uh, right there, and then we just have to balance oxygen. Uh, we have 11 uh, oxygen atoms here, 2 there, 11 there, and then 24 there. So that means that we need to put here a 12. All right, so that is uh, how you balance this uh, chemical reaction. Now, before punching any numbers, we can predict the sign. Okay, so let's see, uh, let's take a look at the number of moles of gas. Notice that in this particular case, there's only two substances that are gases, CO2 and oxygen, but they have exactly the same stoichiometric coefficient, so that means that you actually uh, can't use that criterion here. But we can look at the rest of the species. Notice that the rest of the species is one mole of one molecule of solid for 11 molecules of a liquid. Okay, so uh, generally you expect that liquids are more entropic than solids. And in this particular case, you actually have 11 molecules of liquid for each one molecule of, of a solid. So this obviously is a reaction that generates a dispersal of matter. You expect the sign uh, of this reaction to be, of the tension entropy for this reaction to be positive. All right, so let's see if that works out. 
Okay, what we do is simply we uh, utilize this uh, equation where we are going to take uh, the change in entropy in the chemical reaction as is the balance of products minus reagents, the absolute molar entropies of products minus reagents. All right, so uh, we start with products. We have uh, 12 molecules or 12 moles of CO2, so that will be 12 times the molar entropy of CO2 as a gas, plus 11 molecules of water, so that's 11 times the molar entropy standard of water as a liquid, minus the uh, molar entropies of uh, reagents, right? So we have one mole of uh, sucrose, C12, H22, O11, solid, and then 12 molecules of O2, so that would be 12 times the molar entropy of O2, which is a gas. Okay, all right, so we just simply go to the table and uh, get those numbers. Uh, I'm not going to write units specifically here, but all of the units for the uh, molar entropy are going to be joules per Kelvin per mole, right? So we'll have here 12, and then the molar entropy of CO2 is 213. Actually, I'm going to write the units because I think it's still useful. Mole Kelvin plus 11 times 69.9 joules per mole Kelvin. Mole Kelvin minus the change in entropy or the entropy of uh, reagents, which is for sucrose, 360.2 joules per mole Kelvin plus 12 times the molar entropy of uh, oxygen, which is uh, 205. 0.1 joules per mole Kelvin at 288 Kelvin of temperature. All right, so when you uh, punch these numbers in your calculator, you find that this is going to be a positive number, as uh, we had anticipated, and has a value of 511.9 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so positive, again, as we had anticipated, and, and again, you can clearly see that there's really no mystery to calculating the change in entropy in our reaction uh, as long as you have what the absolute molar entropy is. And again, we have spent quite a bit of time uh, uh, explaining how those absolute molar entropies uh, can be determined from the third law of thermodynamics. All right, so this is uh, kind of an application for uh, how to determine the change uh, in entropy in a chemical reaction. Uh, but there's one question that uh, one can ask, and is, uh, the qu that question is the following. Okay, so we have here this value for the change in entropy. The question is, uh, does this mean that this reaction is spontaneous? And uh, uh, to answer that question, uh, you actually need more data. Uh, the answer to that question is, we do not know. Notice that the only thing that we have done here is calculate what the change in entropy for the system is. Right? The system is just the chemical reaction, but the second law of thermodynamics, which is what allows you to predict spontaneity, requires the calculation of the change in entropy in the entire universe. This is just one of the, piece, the pieces that, of the universe, right? That's just the system. Uh, uh, to this, we would need to add the change in entropy in the surroundings, and if the balance of that number is positive, then the reaction will be spontaneous. If it's negative, then the reaction will not be spontaneous as written, uh, reacts to products. It will be spontaneous in the reverse uh, uh, direction. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to uh, then see how to compute the change uh, in entropy in the surroundings for a chemical reaction so that from there then we can predict what the uh, uh, spontaneity of a chemical reaction is.